Hello everyone, welcome back to another video on Crack Concepts and in today's video we will be discussing data structures in R. In the last video I discussed data types in R so make sure you do not miss any other videos from the playlist and with that let's begin with today's video. So our first data structure is vector. What is a vector? A one dimensional collection of elements all of the same type and this is how we create it. Let's say the name of the vector is temperatures arrow C and in brackets we give the values that we want in vector. This is daily temperatures in Celsius or, the, or we create vector fruits arrow C and inside we give all the values apple, banana, orange. So if you want to see visually how a vector looks, it looks like this one dimensional collection of values and they all are going to be of the same data type. Hence, same color is used over here. So that is vector. Now, second data type is list. One step ahead. One dimensional collection. This is also a 1D collection, but it can hold different types. So as you can see over here, list, it also is 1D, but it can have values of different data types. A 1D collection that can hold different data types. And this is how we create it. Person arrow list we use the word list and in brackets we whatever we want in list name is equal to john age is equal to 30 married is equal to true scores is equal to this is this is a vector we can have different data types in list what is a real world example you can store different information of a person like their name age their marital status exam scores etc when to use grouping mixed or complex data like database records or API responses. So vector can hold only the same data type, but list can hold different data types. Now let's go one step further, metrics. Now metrics is two dimensional, a two dimensional grid of same type elements. It has rows and columns, but it will be of the same data type. Let's see how we can create a matrix. This is the name of the matrix that we want to give sales arrow metrics and in bracket we write c c is vector 150 200 170 190 210 230 we have given all the values and comma we give number of rows that we want and the number of columns that we want so we want two rows and three columns now how does this work it creates a two into three because uh, the number of rows that we want is two and the number of columns that we want is three so it creates a 2 into 3 matrix called as sales. By default, data is filled column wise. So 150, 200, 170, 190, 210, 230. And this is how we have also written in our code 150, 200, 170, 190, 210, 230. And we enter it column wise. So 150, 200, 170, 190, 210, 230. What are some real world examples of using a matrix? It, is, it can be used for monthly sales figures for two products across three months stored in a matrix. So these are two different products and their sales in three different months. So the data type is same. Column wise, the data type is same. So that is where we use metrics. When to use for mathematical operations on 2D numeric data like images or sales data. Now next one is array, which is again one step further from matrix it is multi-dimensional version of a matrix 2d plus now what that means if you see this diagram over here this is our matrix it has rows and columns but the data is of the same data type column wise data is same now array is the same but it is a collection of metrics metrics so one two three there are three slices over here, three matrices over here. So array is collection of metrics. Now, how can we create an array? This is the name that we want to give to our array, temperature underscore data arrow. And then we use the word arrow and in brackets we write one is to 24, dim is equal to C, four comma three comma two, this is our vector. What this does, it creates a 3D array with four rows, three columns, two matrices so array is a collection of matrices four three two rows columns matrices or slices depth layers and here we have written one colon 24 
which means we want values from 1 to 24 filled column wise so even here the values are filled column wise across dimensions so this is how our output will be this is how visually it will look this so since we had written 432 we would be having two metri matrices so the first matrix will have these values we need four rows and three columns and the values start from 1 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 now our second matrix is over here again four rows three columns 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 because we have written over over here 1 colon 24 you can give different values also as per this example the values would be ranging from 1 to 24 and if you want to access each slice each of these slices each of these matrices this is how you can do temperature underscore data this is the name of our matrix square brackets comma comma one so which means first matrix first four into three matrix will be printed now if we write temperature underscore data this is the name of our matrix square bracket comma comma two second four four by three matrix will be printed what are some real world examples storing temperature readings for four cities three days and two times per day morning and evening four cities three days and two times per day so morning and evening so two matrices one for morning one for evening when to use complex data like climate data across multiple dimensions space and time now our next data structure is data frame which is basically a table where each column can be a different type so if you again see in the diagram matri matrix is rows and columns of the same data type array is collection of matrices now data frame data frame can have columns of different data types in both of these the data type has to, had to be same but in data frame the data type of columns can be different a table where each column can be a different type example employees is the name of the data frame that we want to give arrow data dot frame and in brackets we write name is equal to then we give a vector comma age is equal to we give a vector is manager is equal to another vector that we give and this is how the output will be name age is manager these are our column names and the vectors that we have specified those are going to be the values name age is manager for name we have alice and bob for age we have 28 34 is manager we have true false what would be a real world example in case of data frames a company's employee database with names character ages and managers status when to use tabular data with mixed data types like survey results spreadsheets or data bases whenever you want to create a table with different data types for columns you can use data frames now our sixth and the last data structure is factor it is used for categorical variables with fixed levels and how can we create it this is the name education underscore level arrow factor use the word factor and then we give a vector c high school bachelor master bachelor it creates a factor variable with four values factors are used to represent categorical data in r levels are automatically sorted alphabetically unless specified index wise the values would be same high school bachelor master bachelor but level wise it will be sorted alphabetically so for bachelor it would be one another bachelor one high school two master three what is a real world example whenever you want to represent let's say you want to represent education levels of students or employees for statistical analysis when to use categorical data in surveys demographics or experiment groups and with that i will end today's video make sure to check out our other videos from our r programming playlist thank you so much for watching this video